what's good everyone so in today's video we're going to be talking about frame frame control what it is exactly why it's so important and how you can actually maintain it when you're prospecting and you're doing sales now by the end of this video you're going to know exactly why it's so important and how to actually do that when you're in the dms you're trying to convince people to hop on a call with you and when you're on the actual sales call how to use it to your advantage to close more deals because trust me this is very important if you don't wrap your head around this and this is just a, like a life principle in general this is not just business here frame is very important you're operating under a certain frame even if you don't know it so once you learn how to master this you've mastered quite a lot of other um, bits of human psychology here so i'm going to start recording i'm not going to uh, feed you with bs so yeah frame control now what is frame exactly frame is the, the best way to put it is your perspective on life it's your boundaries it's your principles it's just the way you maneuver life and how you how you operate how you view the world essentially now as you can see here it's kind of like it's basically like a picture frame so as you can see here i drew arrows to signify that you don't really go out of that frame very much you don't really push out of it nor do you really let much stuff in so maybe that's new thoughts maybe that's new people that uh, don't align with your frame or your principles and you know the same can be said vice versa you don't really venture out into um let's say you're trying to meet new types of people you're in a new city you know there's certain amount there's certain people that you think you get along with there's certain people you think okay maybe, maybe i can get along with them if i knew them a bit more and then there's certain types of people that you just don't know you don't think you'd get along with so you don't really you just avoid them basically so that's kind of we're talking outside of the frame here right so when you're in an interaction so that's the first principle frame exactly what it is and then the second principle is when you're interacting with another person every single interaction you ever had is a battle for frame or it's just um it's just two frames essentially it doesn't have to always be a battle like it can be very cordial but everyone is operating under a certain frame so let's say this is you am i recording good let's say this is you and then let's say you're in a conversation with another person now where frame i think a good example to think about frame is let's say someone's disrespecting you let's say this person here is disrespecting you and this is you they're, they're throwing insults at you they're being very snarky throwing sarcastic jokes for whatever reason maybe they're just jealous and bitter of your success so this is you right your job what you don't want to do is given to their frame and what's their frame exactly their frame is oh i'm like you're a loser you're bitter you're you haven't achieved anything uh, you're weak stuff like that so what however they see you however they see because again it goes back to how they see life however they see you is basically their frame so if you accept their frame which is essentially agreeing to what they say then you fall in under their frame and now there is always always going to be inferior to them because you've done that now your frame is hopefully it's you're very confident you're you know stand up for yourself you don't take any bs and you know everything that they're saying is not correct so the good frame good frame control here is just st sticking up for yourself ignoring what they say uh letting it you know brush off and just making them look stupid so that's what frame control essentially is All right they're trying to impose their frame onto you and you just don't let it happen you're basically imposing your frame onto them and then at some point they're gonna have to give in if you're very good at sticking up for yourself and if you have good frame control and then now you're 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 the superior in this interaction i'm trying to draw one and then the other person's inferior now that's a good life example there frame control uh the example is when someone's you know bullying you. let's say you were younger and you got bullied a lot like or picking on you this is uh, frame control when you were younger you probably didn't have good frame control because um it, it obviously it resulted in you being picked on and bullied so there's a lesson there now why it's so important so we're going to get into why it's so important here it's really important that you have frame and i've kind of explained it already um it's pretty self-explanable but it allows you to be more influential if i can type it out here it allows you to be more influential when you walk into that room and everyone's falling under your frame and you have such good frame control 
then you know they're gonna want to listen to you more they're gonna talk over you less they're gonna argue with you less and then this gonna this is gonna lead to more respect when you walk in that room and you have such a strong frame and people can almost sense it then they pretty much have no choice but to bow down to it now it doesn't mean you have to be you know el macho and you have to force it on every time no you don't it's just it just comes to a point where you've built yourself up you've built up your frame control so well that it's just natural it's just part of your identity now so you don't even when you you're not meaning to do it you're still you're still controlling the frame essentially you know when people talk to you they talk in your terms they talk about what you want to talk about um and they you know you get to dictate where the conversation goes so enough you know let's get into very tangible situations here so more influential more respect um you basically get what you want more often yeah exactly you, you get what you want more often so if you wrap your head around this and you practice frame control more often like as you come off this video then you're just going to get what you're going to find the universe is going to start gifting you not to be corny but it's going to start gifting you what you want simply for keeping frame and sticking up for yourself now let's get into some examples because and you know because i really want to drill this home and this is why it's so important in sales so in sales and prospecting let's start with prospecting first when you're in the dms you're interacting with people trying to get them to hop on a call in prospecting let's do two here yeah in prospecting let's say so you're in a convo let's say you reached out cold let's say you're doing cold outreach this is bugging out jesus christ yeah this is really bugging out okay Come on, man. Come on, come on. Let's say you're doing cold outreach. There we go. Let's say you're doing cold outreach. Chances are your frame control or your frame in general is going to be slightly in, or more likely to be inferior to the other person. Why? Because, because they don't know who you are. They just met you. So there's no reason for them to want to go under your frame not go under your frame but basically fall fall into your frame that's the word so when you're messaging cold people when you're messaging cold doing cold outreach you're likely to be in an inferior frame now compare that to when you're doing warm as you get warmer you can probably see the pattern here warm and hot outreach or inbound leads superior frame and you know you have superior frame if my camera cut off there for a second that was weird anyway so let's say you're messaging an inbound lead you're likely to have the more superior frame because and you'll know you have it because they'll start saying things like oh my god it's it's matt i uh, didn't think you'd reply or i've been following your content for a long time oh i've been loving the content you've been putting out oh i've been following your your i, I hopped in your vsl a couple while couple couple months ago been watch your youtube channel you know they're falling into your frame I don't know how to explain it. it's really hard to explain in words it's just something you have to get in the trenches to experience so when you're prospecting in for your frame superior frame 10 this is most most of the time this is what it looks like now the battle is how do you turn how do you do even if you do cold outreach how to maintain frame frame control now because this is this is what this is what happens when you do cold outreach and you just don't have any frame Let's say this is you and you're trying to get to you're an a you're trying to get to b which is a booked call convincing a complete stranger on the internet to book a call with you if you don't maintain your frame this is what's going to happen hey how's it going nice to meet you da -da 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 -da. boom you're way off into the sunset you're not at b you just let it drift off somewhere or you go, hi, how's it, how's it going? Hey, I want to sell you something. Oh, I have a new package. It's not five ninety nine. Boom, you lost them. Right? Whereas if you did have good frame control, you know, you'd guide the con. It's just like read, read this book, The Way of the Wolf by um, Jordan Belfort. It's a sales book, but 
he has this concept called straight line selling, which is exactly what I'm uh, preaching to you now. Where you know you got you're in A, B is booking a call or closing them for a sale, and then you most of, for the most part it might go up and down a bit, but it leads to your end goal, which is B. So I hope that made sense. Reach out to me on Instagram. Um, if it doesn't make sense, the link's in the description. Because I know this can be quite... You might have to watch it a few times for you to get it. But the question is, how do we actually maintain that in prospecting? And I'm going to throw in sales now. Right here. And I'll tell you a little story as well. Um, which will apply to, to sales. The sales example. So in terms of sales... Again, you have to convince, you have to try to convince them, not try to convince someone, but just carry it out in such a way that you, they end up buying for you, from you. So I'll tell you a story I think will really encapsulate this. So my first ever sales call, I'll tell you about my first ever sales call. Now, months before that first ever sales call, I was absolutely terrified of the thought of taking my first sales call because I'd never taken it before. And on top of that, it didn't help the fact that I was very introverted. I'd been very in my shell didn't want to document the journey i wasn't very active on social media and i didn't really show myself on social media before then remember this was back in like like secondary school college days when everyone was very judgmental you're in your own like echo chamber and you cared about what everyone thought because you didn't want to look stupid in school or college so i was that guy i wasn't very popular and i was very introverted so when it comes to sales i thought this wasn't for me like i almost disqualified myself from taking my first sales call and then one day, um, someone in my network referred someone, like I was having my first sales call. Someone referred someone to me, someone, excuse me, someone referred me to, to, to a prospect, essentially. Hey, Matt does this, this, this and that. I think you should speak to him. And he's like, okay, bet. And this is my first sales call. So my first ever sales call ended up going 90 minutes. Now, to put that into context, your sales call shouldn't go over 60 minutes. Like most of the time, it shouldn't go over 60 minutes. Sometimes you can get it done within 30 minutes and you can get collect payment. This, my first ever sales call went to 90 minutes. Like I was sitting on the, this exact desk. I was sitting here on the laptop, trying to maneuver this thing, trying to get this prospect to buy for 90 minutes. And I just didn't know what I was doing. And he was just asking question after question after question. I didn't have any authority in it. You know, I was letting it go wherever I wanted. I was just like people pleasing him. I was, I was, ple I was basically just letting him dictate the conversation. And guess what happened? I didn't get the sale. He said we had to follow up. Like luckily, it wasn't a flat out no that would have hurt, but it wasn't a yes either. So that's not good either. So let that let that be a lesson to you. Make sure you maintain frame. If I had known how to maintain frame back then, I probably would have gotten the sale. <laughs> So in sales and prospecting, we'll throw how to actually, how to maintain frame control in prospecting and sales. One of the best ways, this is before the call or just actually throughout the call, make sure you're, you know, confident in yourself now and do like by any means necessary, do what it takes to make sure you're nice and confident and you're not going to, you know, take BS from anyone. So, you know, confidence is key. So if you need to dress well and actually just dress well regardless, please, it helps. So confidence is key. Make sure you like dress well, make sure you're hitting the gym, make sure your life is in order. And then that's going to seep into your sales calls and seep into your business when, you know, you're in the trenches here. Confidence is key. Second thing is and maybe do some affirmations, do some mindset work, you know, look up here see what thoughts are holding you back and try and flip them into more positive thoughts. Second thing is asking questions or asking the type of questions that you need to ask. This is super, super important. The questions you ask dictate the result of your, of what you're trying to do. So for example, in that first sales call, I wasn't asking very good questions. I wasn't asking very pointed questions. I'm just asking questions for the sake of asking questions. Now, me now, I'm very more, I'm more intentional with the questions I ask and I know what kind of order I need to ask them in and I know exactly what I'm getting out of them. And this is going to lead to, 
And if we go back here and say we have question one, question two, question three. So question one being like, what made you want to hop on? What are you doing at the moment to do X, Y, Z? Da, da, da. How long have you been doing that? And it's going to lead to the cell. And also, let's throw in a third thing here. The one usually, this is a rule of thumb, so the one asking the questions is the one holding frame. Because if you think about it, you if you're asking questions and someone's answering, that's basically you requesting something from the other person and them fulfilling a command, fulfilling that request. So pretend you're like the king and the servant, the king's going to ask the servant to do whatever he wants. The one asking questions is usually the one holding frame. And the last thing here, there's just some t more tactical ways to maintain frame. If you're in a sales call, for example, or if you're prospecting, is you just straight up, there's just something in the sales process that's very important called the preframe. Like it literally gets the name preframe, where you're essentially outlining how the call will go, or why you do things, or how you do things. So the preframe on a sales call is going to go something like this then it's going to be near towards the beginning just after you've done your small talk and you're ready to kick things off so you'd be like okay um let's say your name is john okay john so first things first i just want to let you know how the calls will go so you know what to expect essentially i'm just going to ask you a couple questions trying to see where you're at at the moment see where you're trying to get to and really what's stopping you from getting there by yourself and look if it makes complete sense if i can genuinely help you out today I'd love to walk you through that process and how we're going to crush it for you and your business and how I've also done it for other clients. However, it's not for everyone. So if that's the case, for whatever reason, I can't help you, then I'll just point you in the right direction. I'll be the first one to tell you no hard feelings um, and we can I'll save you time. How does that sound? So there I was saying how the call was going to go. So they couldn't come in and dictate how the call was going to go for them. Right. Otherwise, they would have thrown us off this loop. They would have thrown us off of this path to the sale. We tell them how the call's going to go. And if you don't like it, you can beat it. Now, you don't always, obviously, you don't say that, but you give off that impression. You get the confidence. If you have the confidence when you say that and you, you, you looking confident and you, you're meaning this stuff, then they're going to bow down to your frame. Let's say they, for somewhat, because this happens sometimes, a prospect, it doesn't get, it just goes through one ear out the other. They start asking questions and they start asking you stuff instead of you asking them one way to establish frame again and maintain frame control is just be let's say like they've asked a couple of questions you know because it's not in the memo okay look john um i'm happy to answer all questions at the very end trust me but i think the best the best way we can handle this call and how i dictate these calls excuse me the best way we can go about these calls and what's been most helpful for people is if I start asking the questions first, just to see, just to see if I can hundred percent help you in the first place. Otherwise it'd just be a waste of our time. Does that make sense? And then nine times out of 10, they'll bow down to it. So I think that's a more um, tangible example of what frame control is. So it's very important. You know, it gets you respect. It gets you more, more deals in the door. Um, and overall, you just, it just boosts your confidence and it just changes the way you approach life. So I guess your biggest takeaway here is to just see how you can, how can you implement this in, in your prospecting? How can you implement this in yourself? And how can you implement this in general life? You know, when you're dating, when you're you know talking to that girl, when you're talking to your friend, when you're talking to someone who, you know, might be jealous of you or, or probably doesn't get along with, how you talk to your family, stuff like that. So I hope this has been a helpful video. Again, if you need more information or if you have any questions about frame control, you can DM me on Instagram at Matt Jacob. It's going to be in the description. But other than that, I hope this has been very helpful. And um, I look forward to see, I look, I basically look forward to seeing you use this and a book more calls and close more deals. So that's it from today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Like, comment, subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one.